Hello friends, uh, myself Akash Ranga, I am a nephrologist and a transplant physician practicing in Thane region. Today we are uh, here to talk something about kidney which might be useful. Um, kidney is a vascular organ, it is made up of blood vessels, it has been made to filter uh, the waste out of the body, that is all we know. But uh, is it the only thing that kidney does? Uh, no, actually, kidney does a lot of functions. Uh, it does uh, excrete the waste through the urine, uh, but it also regulates uh, the water balance uh, in the body. Whenever body has got excess amount of water, it throws it out and uh, vice versa. Also, salt balance is also maintained uh, by the kidneys. Water is in excess, it is excreted, and water is in deficit, it is retained by the kidneys. Besides that, uh, body plays an important role in uh, hematopoiesis or uh, blood synthesis. It uh, releases a hormone called erythropoietin and uh, erythropoietin stimulates the bone marrow to produce the blood cells. So that is why the patients with kidney failure often uh, have anemia. Then it also regulates the bone health. Uh, by that I mean calcium, phosphorus and parathyroid hormone uh, also can get affected because of the kidneys. It is known to retain or excrete an excess amount of calcium, uh, phosphorus and in turn these uh, will stimulate or uh, suppress parathyroid hormone. So it has got hormone, uh, salt, uh, water balance properties uh, along with uh, just being a filtering uh, organ. Now uh, is it rare to have a kidney disease? Actually not. Um, one out of uh, seven people in the world are affected by one or the other illnesses of the kidneys. So it is not that rare to have kidney disease. Um, are the screening tests for kidney uh, too expensive? Uh, perhaps not. Uh, you just need a simple urine routine and microscopy test and a blood test known as serum creatinine which can reflect kidneys excreting power and urine itself can tell you if kidney is not able to uh, retain protein or uh, kidney has any inflammation going on by looking at the cells in the urine. So these can be very cheap and uh, uh, helpful screen tests for kidney diseases which will uh, identify uh, most of the times the kidney issues. Uh, and then once we identify that somebody is having some kidney issues then that person can be subsequently investigated and so on. Now, uh, do we uh, suffer from sim uh, some, uh, do we have symptoms when we have kidney illness? So interestingly most of the kidney failures that happen in the world, uh, they don't have any symptoms until the stage of kidney failure has reached. Uh, but few people are fortunate enough to have symptoms uh, so that they can present with high blood pressure, they can present with um, blood in urine, they can present with pain uh, in the flank region, they can present with uh, swelling over the body. So these are the most of the times early symptoms that patient can present with and sometimes they just have uh, lassitude and weakness that is all they have and then one just have to just screen for the kidney test and if it is abnormal then to evaluate further. Once the kidney progresses the failure stage then people often suffer from uh, uh, the late symptoms which are like uh, lack of appetite and then uh, weight loss, uh, then they may have uh, tiredness, weakness and lethargy, they just want to lie on the bed. Then they may suffer from uh, fluid excess over their body, uh, sometimes they may behave uh, abnormally. So these are the symptoms of uh, generally advanced kidney failure. Uh, and more often than not, uh, they end up being a dialysis patient then. So who are the patients who are more likely to have kidney issues? So interestingly, most common uh, cause of kidney failure in the world so far is diabetes, which is cause of uh, half of the kidney failures uh, in the world. So uh, if we just keep a good check on sugars and uh, timely screen kidney issues and timely visit the nephrologist. So many things can be uh, avoided uh, in future. 
talking about the second most common cause that is hypertension which is again a common illness uh, but often neglected people are hesitant to take pills hesitant to go to the doctor often hesitant to do home blood pressure monitoring and uh, they often don't follow the instructions which are given by the doctors and then uh, it, it may lead to kidney failure over the time. Then there can be uh, kidney failure because of painkillers. So people uh, for simple aches and pains also they go to the medical store and they just buy over the counter painkillers and painkillers can also damage kidneys uh, in long term also and in short term also uh, by causing interstitial, uh, interstitial diseases uh, of the kidneys. So it is still one of the uh, common cause of kidney failure in India. So over the counter drug, uh, drug intake is generally um, not recommended. Then there are some genetic illnesses like autosomal dominant polycystic kidney diseases uh, and uh, uh, cystic kidney, other cystic kidney diseases which uh, often uh, run in the families and if they are screened, uh, the patients are screened early in time then they can be treated uh, with something which can prolong the life of the kidneys. Then there are uh, other illnesses like uh, inflammation, inflammatory disorders of uh, not just body but kidney also self limiting, uh, not self limiting but self limited uh, illnesses. Um, so it does not take a lot to do a creatinine level and uh, urine routine microscopy and visit uh, nearest nephrologist. Now people are often afraid of uh, nephrologist like if I go to the nephrologist that uh, doctor will start me on dialysis. So it is no, never like that. So uh, the nephrologists are generally kidney specialists uh, who will evaluate uh, you thoroughly why the kidneys are affected and is there anything that is reversible which will help your kidneys and uh, if someone uh, has got some reversible illnesses then patients may get cured of kidney, kidney illnesses if diagnosed within time. If the disease is quite advanced then no one can save the patient from dialysis or transplant ultimately. So uh, it is uh, important not to uh, be afraid of uh, the nephrologist also. And uh, when we talk about uh, nephrologist and dialysis and transplant also, uh, people uh, uh, it would be interesting to know that uh, kidney transplant are still the commonest transplant uh, after cornea transplant of course that are performed in the world. And uh, donation uh, of the kidney is quite uh, uh, regarded as like a morbidity for the person who is donating. So more often than not people are allowed or okayed to donate the kidneys only when they are fit. Uh, otherwise they are uh, rejected as a donor and uh, the one who donates the kidney generally is a very healthy guy, uh, less likely to develop kidney failure in future and uh, with one kidney he can survive near near normal life. Why I say near, near normal life? Because then he has to anyways avoid painkillers, uh, keep check on blood pressure which anyways other, otherwise a normal person will do. So it, it is near, near normal life uh, which one will have after donation of the kidney. So not to be hesitant uh, to donate the kidneys. Now there are some other myths also. Uh, uh, I won't take much time but we will talk about it. Uh, drinking excess amount of water, does it flush the kidneys and uh, help the patient? So drinking water in adequate amount is recommended. Uh, generally we require 2 to 3 liters of water every day. Um, when you have kidney illness and when you have inability to excrete excess amount of water out of the body, that excess amount of water can cause water logging in the body and then breathlessness and eventually danger to the life. So it is important to follow the instructions by the nephrologist and um, use water uh, as per the requirement of the body and not just to uh, keep on uh, drinking. Then uh, when we talk about the kidney diseases, there are uh, kidney stone diseases also uh, quite prevalent uh, uh, especially in our country. So I often see that uh, people stop drinking milk, uh, people uh, do a lot of uh, stuff, fancy stuff uh, to avoid the stones in future. So again I would say that you get evaluated by the nephrologist or urologist and get sorted out which kind of stone you have, then what kind of diet needs to be followed for that. 
uh, often we see that uh, calcium is innocent bystander and people just restrict the milk and uh, calcium in diet which further aggravates the situation it causes uh, stone formation uh, uh, more commonly when you restrict the calcium in diet there is nothing to bind with the oxalate and it gets absorbed in the blood and then oxalate stones are formed quite uh, commonly is there something we can do to avoid kidney illness uh, or to get cured of it? Yes. Um, so there are three levels of prevention, primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary. So dialysis and transplants are like uh, late interventions and they are just rehabilitative measures. Um, primordial means to identify the people who are at risk of having kidney issues in future. So who are they? Those. Uh, who are born to people with kidney kidney illnesses, uh, those who uh, are obese, those who have unhealthy lifestyle like eating junk, uh, salt and a uh, uh, lot of animal protein intake. So there, then and there itself if we modify the risk like to cut down the salt in diet, uh, to cut down excess amount of oil, to have to do regular exercise. So here we reduce the risk of having kidney issues. Now then there is primary prevention that means people who are likely to have kidney illness but they are already on the way like someone who is diabetic or hypertensive they are more likely to have kidney illnesses. So what do you do? You just control the sugars well, you just control the blood pressure well, you avoid the over the counter medicines and that might help in preventing kidney illnesses. Then there is uh, secondary prevention those who have already kidney illness and uh, we need to reduce the progression of the illness. Uh, so there uh, you use certain drugs to reduce uh, the protein leak and to prolong the kidney life uh, so that he eventually doesn't reach to the kidney failure. As such, uh, only about uh, 10 to 20 percent of people with kidney illness they progress to the end stage renal failure. But that also can be reduced by these measures uh, to significant amount. Now the take home message uh, from my end will be uh, to get screened uh, today itself even though you are healthy for kidney illness more if, uh, if, you, are, if you have high blood pressure, uh, more if you have diabetes, uh, if you have unhealthy lifestyle or obesity, uh, visit uh, nearest nephrologist as soon as possible. Uh, once you find uh, any abnormality, in cons of, after all it is after consultation with your general practitioner or family physician, follow the instructions by the doctors well 